I'm Burt Lancaster. I'm standing inside the Kremlin. Behind me is the bell tower and the ancient cathedrals. In 1812, Napoleon captured the city of Moscow, and his army marched past these very same cathedrals. Shortly thereafter, the Russian army pushed the French back to the area of Belorussia. One of the heroes of that war was Prince Bagration. That is why the Soviets called their plan to free Belorussia Operation Bagration. It was the northwestern part of the Soviet Union that the Nazis occupied for three years during the unknown war. In 1944, they launched a massive attack which swept through Belorussia, and the Soviet troops continued westward across the German frontier. Our story, the liberation of Belorussia. In 1944, the turning of the tide. After three years of brutal fighting, the Red Army was slowly pushing back the German hordes that had overrun thousands of square miles of Russian soil. They marched west as liberators. The great heroes of Mother Russia, artists, philosophers, scientists, soldiers. A memorial in the ancient city of Novgorod, marking a thousand years of Russian culture. In 1242, the legendary Alexander Nevsky wiped out a German army bent on destroying Novgorod. 700 years later, Hitler determined to annihilate Novgorod, to melt down the bronze of the city's treasures for the factories of Germany. Hitler almost succeeded. Almost. After the war, Novgorod was restored to its ancient beauty. In 1944, Hitler had told his troops, none of the historic or artistic treasures of the East are of any importance. The German supermen reduced Novgorod's venerable cathedral to rubble, crushed its domes, hacked through its priceless frescoes. children of Siegfried, of Barbarossa, the children of Attila, had been shown a vision. The Aryan race triumphant, Germany all-powerful. The Third Reich to last a thousand years. From Poland through Russia to the Urals where Asia began, one glorious new order. the extinction of the Untermensch, the subhumans of the East, and all their civilization.
human lives and property had been unimaginable. But what was most precious was still alive. It had been three years of horror. But now, in 1944, the Red Army had come back over the long and winding road the Germans had trod towards Moscow. Smolensk had been freed, and now Novgorod. And now they came to the first villages of Belarusia. Through the winter, the Red Army slugged westward along hundreds of miles of front. Morale was high. This was a battle-hardened army with the victories behind it in the Ukraine, Moldavia, the Crimea. They were a broad tide of liberation. As winter turned to the mud of spring, they waited. With summer would come the campaigning season and the offensive that would hurl the Germans out of Belarusia for good. command began to issue its plans for the annihilation of Hitler's army group center. Four great Soviet army groups would strike simultaneously, liberating Belarusia, then breaking through to the Baltic, East Prussia, and eventually Warsaw. General Bagramian commanded the first Baltic front in the north. General Chernyakhovsky had the third Belarusian front. General Zakharov had the second Belarusian front. And on the southern flank, the first Belarusian front, it was the brilliant Rokossovsky.